This is the Tech Talk for passive cooling for aircraft carrier jet blast deflector systems, which we will refer to as JBDs. The principal investigator for this project is Tony J. Morris, the founder, president, and CEO of American Maglev Technology of Florida, abbreviated here as AMT. For nearly 30 years, AMT has been about the business of putting magnetics to work for humanity. Our core competencies are high fidelity modeling and simulation, continuum electromechanics, and multidisciplinary project management. We believe that not one expert can know everything, so we build and fortify professional relationships with teams comprised of an eclectic group of industry leaders and scientists who work together in synchrony. This project brings together coal country companies, last century aluminum casting houses, and some of the most specialized engineers, scientists, and researchers. Our end goal is to take the know-how developed in projects like this one and spin it into new focused enterprises that seek to commercialize new solutions in defense and commercial markets. We are proud to be a link in that chain that connects ideas with true commercial innovation and market opportunity. For the existing JBD design and the challenges it faces, this is an issue that goes back a long, long time. As jet engines have gotten more and more capable, jet blasts have gotten hotter and harder to manage. The Navy has been well served with the current solution, which uses active cooling with water, pipes, pumps, electric service, and everything that goes along with that. It works, but at a huge annual cost in maintenance and readiness and reliability. The Navy is seeking a passive cooling solution that would work no matter what else is going on with aircraft and aircraft operations. And it would have to stand up to all the rigors that the active system deals with every day, including high temperatures from not only jet blasts, but also ambient heat supercharged by climate change, which can reach up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit in places like the Persian Gulf. Our mission is to ensure that personnel and equipment are never exposed to these high temperatures. And we have to do that passively without reliance on electrical and water pump systems. Other requirements for the system include the ability to fit it in the existing flight deck pit so that it radically cools the surface temperature one minute after takeoff over multiple sorties. What's at stake adds up to a lot of money, a lot of sailors' time that can be diverted to tasks other than JBD maintenance, and also increased peace of mind that sailors will not be exposed to a dangerously hot JBD surface. The existing seawater cooling system would be completely eliminated, representing a huge weight savings for the ship and one fewer burden for Navy personnel to have to deal with. Reducing and otherwise diverting their time from JBD operations represents over 10 million in savings, U.S. dollars, per year across the current fleet of 44 JBD systems, which are installed on 11 carriers. Furthermore, the use of a novel, lightweight aluminum cerium alloy, which has demonstrated the strength of steel and high corrosion resistance, along with a lightweight carbon foam, will yield additional weight savings, perhaps as much as 50% over the previous Mark 7 system. Beyond the conventional JBD orientation, this concept may be applied for vertical takeoff jet operations that are currently doing violence not only to ships' decks, but also the conventional concrete airfields wherever these aircraft operate. It is a huge and growing opportunity for our team to serve our greater Navy clients, a few of which are listed here. Here you see a rendering of this concept. This is an all-American concept coming from places with names like Manitowoc and Triadelphia. Originally developed at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, which we will abbreviate as ORNL, this aluminum cerium alloy and carbon graphite foam combined with an off-the-shelf organic phase change material, which we will abbreviate PCM, enables this new lightweight structure 
to rapidly spread the heat from a jet blast from the cover plate to the back plate, acting as a large heat sink. During this program, we utilized the computing power of ORNL, and this concept has been optimized and flown for thousands of aircraft operations over many ambient temperatures, with up to 10 consecutive operational sorties in fast succession. In this phase of research, we built a scaled model and tested it in the lab at ORNL with a small jet engine with a precisely scaled blast profile. Thermal flow testing results indicate congruence with our simulations. We expect to build and test a full-scale JBD section during the next phase of research. Based on this, our technology readiness level stands at four. The original phase one contract was awarded in 2019, and we have since been awarded the phase one option and phase two base program for subscale testing of this concept. As of the date of this recording, the first $500,000 option has been exercised, and our team is fabricating full scale panels to comprise one sixth of the full system for testing and demonstration. As one might imagine, firing off a jet, no matter how tiny, is extremely difficult and caused some great consternation during the last phase of research, even at a state-of-the-art facility like ORNL. We are currently looking for a partner and location to test this one-sixth scaled system with a full jet blast in 2024. Following full-scale testing, we'll work through the channels at NAVAIR and NAVC to qualify the passive JBD and pave the way for a retrofit, retrofit deployment across the United States existing 11 aircraft carriers with additional installations on new carriers coming online in the imminent future. Key features of the system are listed here with advantages of the AMT JBD system shown in the blue column on the right hand side. The new system topology would have built in passive cooling with no need for a seawater cooling system or other high maintenance features. Operations and maintenance would see a significant reduction as with the weight of the system. The passive JBD eliminates all concerns for personnel and aircraft as they relate to the dangerously hot surfaces after up to eight consecutive aircraft sorties. The system can be retrofitted into the existing flight deck pit with identical surface attitude to the center line, resulting in minimal required alterations to the deck. We do expect to seek phase two and a half funding as our testing program concludes in late 2024. This will include the construction of a full-scale passive JBD system for integration and military standard testing in a carrier-like environment. As with anything that goes on an aircraft carrier, we would expect three to five years of government review prior to full implementation for the Navy fleet. In addition to our primary transition advocate, PMA 251 Aircraft Launch and Recovery Equipment Program Office, we expect to work with other groups with interest in passively cooled launch services, such as Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft Development Group at NAVAIR. This application opens up so many new opportunities inside and outside the Department of Defense, where lightweight, strong, high thermal and electrical conductivity are essential properties. In addition to vertical takeoff aircraft, other defense applications could include the next generation of heat sinks for power electronics, such as with missile guidance, where weight is everything. Also shielding for electromagnetic interference and electromagnetic pulse, as the carbon foam has shown to be an excellent insulator. For heat tiles on space reentry systems, the combination of aluminum cerium and carbon foam together can present an attractive opportunity. In commercial and industrial markets, higher volumes and lower costs will open up the next generation of water heaters, 
solar thermal collectors, exterior building insulation panels, and more. This elegant solution that we proposed is simple, but it represents a multidisciplinary approach to an age old problem of thermal and corrosion management. It is the first of what we believe will be many new embodiments and applications of common US based materials like coal, cerium, and aluminum. This is also a deliverable from the massive computing powder, power of our partner, ORNL. On a bigger scale, a new JBD built from aluminum cerium, which has the strength of steel and weight of aluminum, coupled with a carbon foam core that weighs one fifth that of aluminum, represents the opportunity to radically reduce the weight of the JBD and increase the fuel efficiency of the carrier fleet. Through phase two and beyond, we will interface with the Navy to identify funding sources and customers who can help us bring the passively cooled JBD from prototype to commercial innovation. Our own proven strategy is to spin these companies out into new US companies with their own focused management teams, just as we have done with Emergy and Inductive Ventures. You can check out their links at the bottom of this page. If we've learned anything over our 30 year history, we know that high quality, committed partnerships and strategic alliance are the key to progress. We are seeking manufacturing, implementation and testing partners for whom this technology might be a good fit. Our information is shown here. Please reach out to us. We also plan to be in attendance at the 2023 Sea Air Space Exposition in National Harbor in April if you would like to set up a meeting and talk with us. Thank you for your interest.